Hello everybody, my name is Alan Kulashma and in this video, I am going to be giving you a code explanation of the application Space Expedition ARVR. So, I highly recommend you go ahead and take a look at the application demonstration uh, application because it's not technically game. Okay? So, let's get started, shall we? Over here, I'm going to start with the lowest part of the hierarchy, slowly move up towards the hierarchy end. Okay, so first, at the extreme bottom is the I ship, it's just an interface for ship and what a ship should do, and all well, a VR an AR ship that is, it just has a function checks up. That's it. Really, that's it. That's all there is in I ship. <laughs> okay, now let's move to ship. Now over here we have public game object array of pieces. Probably should be not just say a nice field, but let's keep it as is for now. Okay. So over here we have it inherits from I ship and game object array of pieces, and then we have start piece positions and rotations and all the ship pieces and then we'll check if it is separated and a spinner okay we'll take a look at that too okay we'll keep this open in the back of our mind over here i mean and i'll take a and then we'll also open up keyword recognizer and also ship piece okay this hierarchy ends here so over here we have a very a many things so let's take a look at that First, you're using Unity Engine, and Unity Engine at Windows is free, only available if you are using Windows 10. Okay? Hopefully, I am using Windows 10, so I have that feature. Okay? So now we have uh, all the keywords, and then we have an event for underscore on phrase recognized, and then we have a event property. Mm -hmm. Okay? Event property. Okay? So add and remove event property on phrase recognized. We have a public, why is it public? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not used by anything else, so we'll just keep it set. Okay. Now start function and we have a new keyword recognize the keyword on phrase recognize on phrase recognize underscore over here. We have a start. Okay. We we'll start it. And then over here in the yeah, we get the phrase recognize events s. We'll just invoke s dot text. That's all we have to do here. And in pause we'll call recognizer.stop and resume we'll call recognizer.start. Okay, and dispose if recognizer is not equal to null, then we stop it and then we dispose of it. And then we turn on the on phrase recognize this event, we turn it off, we turn it to null, and then we the recognizer to null. Okay, reinitialize if it is not null, then it will just uh, yeah, underscore dispose. Okay, first we'll dispose of it. And then we'll just do everything once again. So we're going to call it dispose and s t a s t a r and start. That's it. Okay. And resume, pause, dispose, and reinit. These are just called instances. And pause, resume, dispose, and reinit. Okay. And start it. That's the reason. Okay. functions are now very empty okay then we have a spinner very simple um, we have an m underscore rotation how much should it rotate and we just um, local Euler angles we'll just um, add it the m underscore rotation times time dot delta time okay so just you know rotate it according to m underscore rotation axis is included here by the way okay so let me show an example over here sorry oh yeah Okay, 
now back here this is rotated normally and then we have and back and then we have a shift piece which i'll explain right now it just contains the position and rotation and m underscore name and whenever you click on it it will speak the name that's it and then it has position and rotation field to expose it the ship very simple okay and then on the start we will yeah we'll you know instantiate all of these pieces that length this is that length and new ship piece array with pieces that length and then we'll set up transform that local position euler angles and get component ship piece that's all we do then we'll get the keyboard recognize that on phrase recognize we will add our on phrase recognize this one okay then we'll get the spinner one uh, on our cells the ship then we'll print the test for debugging purpose and then we'll check if the text is split then we'll split it if it's joined then we'll join oh one more thing um split joint or rotate for the keyword that i use and then i use and if it is split then we'll split if it's joined then i'll join if it's turned then we'll turn and if it's stopped we'll stop check separate we'll switch between separate and and join okay and this will just if separate then we'll return otherwise We'll take all the pieces and move them to the starting position, and we'll take all the pieces and move them to the starting rotations. Okay, and we'll make it that it's no longer separate. And in split, we'll take all the pieces and then move them to their designated position, and we'll take all the all the pieces and move them to their de designated rotations, all in zero point five seconds. All of them. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Right. So we are moving all the pieces. The starting position, rotations and positions when join, and when we are and splitting, we just move them to the designated positions, which I have to fill in. Okay, that's it. So we have covered. Yeah. So that's all there is to these scripts. Now let's take a look at virtual button. Okay, this is by the way thing that uses before Angular. So using upon is fine. We still have a virtual button behavior on it, and we have an on button pressed event and an on button released event. Okay, we are using Unity events here so that look closely, they appear like so. But normal events like you know, um, event system dot action da 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 that won't work. You have to use the Unity event. That's the reason. Okay, in start we will just register the event handler as it. But the thing is, uh, maybe it might be null, but Mm, that's not very possible. That's not very possible. In case, in case is very unlikely, but somehow, due to some weird reason, it might happen. If it fails to get it, and then we'll just don't worry about it. And then the watcher will be done. Then uh, this will be fine. Then we'll have a register event handler. This will register itself. Which means only has two things: on button pressed and on button released. Okay. So technically, uh, virtual button behavior is itself this, so we don't use it. On button press will invoke it, and on button release will invoke that. Okay, that's our virtual before our button. So we have got this spinner ship piece. Now ship move on. Let's take a look at that, shall we? Okay. Okay. So we have a spacing of how. Yeah, we don't use PC. I used to use that earlier, but now I don't. Okay, so you can get rid of that. No problem. And then we have transform path and have movement time and rotation time and IDX for with path index. Then we get the child count and look and make them look at the very next one. Okay, so that now we can directly set it and don't have to do it over and over again. Okay, IDX dot path is set to child count minus one. So it is set to very large. Then we will rotate and move to the next one, so it will go to zero F. Okay. So first, it will rotate. It will rotate locally to the direction of the child, the current index. Okay. So we will get the current index, and we look in the direction of that, and it is going to move towards that waypoint. Okay. So over here, one moment, and over here, is it? Where is it? Yeah, is it? Is Corbett F3 waypoints? 
So that's the first one, so it's going to move to here. So this, I don't know what that. Yeah, for vector is three. So it's going to move to this position. Okay. So what it's actually going to do is that it's going to look in the direction of this, which is going to be looking like something like this. They can't really put it in a 3D world, so it's off. So it's going to look, look towards, uh, we have the same rotation as this, but it's going to move towards there, okay? This is required, uh, trust me on this point, okay? Then I'll move to the very next one, though technically over here, that will mean be in the rotation of this and it will move to the rotation and it will look in the rotation and move over here which would not be very good so let's shift things around and make that zero okay so what it would do is that it would look in the rotation at the same rotation as the first one it starts at zero which will be looking at that point and it will move move to that point while still holding that rotation okay got it that's good oh and it will do and it will call move to next like so on so it will keep bouncing back and forth okay so first we lo locate rotate uh, rotate local to the path that get child index at local rotation at Euler angles so we could directly get local Euler angles okay end the rotation time then we we'll set the on complete to the move to next okay like so all right and this one will call this again okay so it bounce back and forth and back and forth but the thing is it it takes some time to do this back and forth business so that's why the whole system doesn't crash in under half a second okay and this will just loop through all of them from one to child count minus one and then i'll draw the very last line at the very end because then it can't because that's how you have to do it okay and so we have now covered all of this. Now we'll take a look at rotate around a transform. Now rotate it around a transform. Very simple. Name descript describes itself. A moment. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and uh, bye bye. So we have a transform, rotation, and speed. We have an ID, transform, rotation, axis, and speed. Okay. Then we will transform with rotation, axis, and speed. This is the array that contains all the information. And then the transform chart rotated around the axis and the speed. So what we have to do? So we'll loop through all of them and have its curve dot transform dot rotate around. Take the current value and rotate around the transform dot position, meaning our position, ours, and then we'll rotation axis and speed. Let me let me tell you what happens. We'll take the current transform. Let's suppose this is the rotate around transform thing, and this is curve. Okay. And then what this is going to do is make it orbit it, okay, like so. So let's take a look at documentation. Rotate the transform about around axis passing through the world coordinates by angle degrees, okay. So here's your here's your transform and here's your curve, okay. Then we'll go through, and this is the axis going through that point, okay. And then about uh, angle degrees, like. So, okay, like that. It's like rotate, but rotate spins it around itself, but here it's spinning around itself like that, okay? It will use it for the orbits over here. The orbits of these one, two, three, and four solar systems. Though one of them is pre-animated, so we don't need to worry about this one. Namely, this one, it's been pre-animated, okay? So, it's, uh, so we don't need to look at Oh, and uh, randomize effect positions. This is only to be used in game view. I mean, edit one. One moment, please. Cube size and the effect, all the effects. And then we have instantiate effects. Constant context menu. No, let me give a demonstration. I would like to click it. You right click instant effects. If you click it, it will fill the whole screen with the, you know, with all the 
particle effects. And if you select one of them, we'll take a look at them. Ah, it looks much better in the space view actually. Call them on to stop. Okay. Then this will do us. Then we instantiate all of them at the get random position. First we get the random position and put an append as the parent as the trans as transform as the parent. First get a half cube because it will go from here to here at the transform position, but the cube size is this, not half. So that's why you need to cut it in half. Oh, and uh, speaking of which A three half cube equals cube size divided by root. Now this really this is this is the one of the things I really detest around here. Okay, so we'll have to put it in there. And then we'll return the transformer position plus we'll just shift it according to the transformer position, and then we'll have a half cube at x and half cube minus half cube x and half cube x. So we'll take this much and this much. That's a random position anywhere from here to here. And half cube y and z from here to here, and half cube, uh, I mean y and y and one minus one plus one, and z minus z, I mean minus z plus z. Okay, that's what. Uh, so that's what this is for. And on draw gizmos, we'll draw a wire cube of transformed position with cube size. Okay, that's all we have to do in there. Okay, they'll just get a random position and instantiate all the first. Now this one will be run in edit mode like over here. Okay. Portal spinner. Portal spinner will of course spin the portal, but uh, it's more complicated than you think. So it's only 55 lines, it's still you know hard to digest. Okay. Do a rotation start, rotation end, time to open it in the portal. Then we have portal now. Current start and end. We need a start as well because you'll see later. And we have it is open and has slowed down, so it is slow it down slowly. Okay, we have time to open absolute. Okay, um, absolute is just a word I use for timers. Then we set the current to the start to the Euler angle to the m underscore rotation start. The end we put it to the quaternion to Euler, meaning it will convert vector to Euler. Okay, and time to open absolute equals zero. Then we turn off the port. Then if we check first if it's open, then it will speed up the spinning of the portal until it is time for us to open it. Once it is done, we will set the on, is open and true, and then we turn on the portal. Okay? And it will show a spherical interpolate from start to end with time to open absolute divided by time. Just a ratio. Okay? We need to get it 1 and 0, so that's why we need to do it like this. Okay? Now, we have quarter and even, and then over here. We'll linearly inter spherical interpolate from start to end, but we're slowly decreasing the speed, well, decreasing the amount it rotates to. Okay, that's one. And uh, as slow down, we set it to true. Um, and then we quaternion current equals start, and then we'll just multiply them to get uh, multiplying rotations quaternion numbers, Roctonians or Sedanians will get you a their addition, okay? So there are currently I think four maximum branches like complex numbers, Quaternions, Octonions and Sedanians and but, but they are used for 4D and 2D, 3D, 4D and 5D. 4D and 5D we really don't <laughs> need nowadays so they are very much concentrated on. Not, not in the game at least. So over here we have a Quaternion from metadata of course, meaning it's a dot dl alpha, it will multiply them, meaning it will add the rotations to get this is what you have to do, okay? And then if it is, and over here we do it if it is not open, and if it is open, then we'll check if it is slowed down, if it has already slowed down, then we'll just spin in the constant speed, okay? Okay, now move camera. So just move the camera at, the, at object that transform forward times speed times time that delta time. Meaning it will move, we will move the object in its forward direction with the speed at time that delta time forward. Okay, okay. Let me say it again. It will move 
the transform us at object dot transformer folder, not our folder, the objects folder because only that can rotate. <laughs> okay, at speed with time dot delta n. Okay, that's right. And we'll do it on space dot void just so. Okay. Then we'll look at camera. It just looks at the camera at every update. That's it. Not very much of a big deal. No, I don't really use it, but it's very small, so it doesn't have very much. Oh, I already covered keyword recognition. I should also cover. So now we have flash text display. Let's take a look at that, shall we? And here we have a runtime and a flash text display time. How long should it display it? Then we have text mesh tm pro dot text mesh ugy text mesh. Okay. As a so that's a text mesh, not just regular old um, text objects on a canvas. Okay, they're different, very different actually. They're from Text Mesh Pro. It's a, it's a new thing that comes in built into Unity 2018. It has been depreciated quite a while ago. And then we have a flash text file at resources, like so. We have a format, the start and the rest. And all the flash text. And then here we'll do resources.load text as a flash text text file. The, oh, oops. Add the flash text text file at resources slash flash text text file and we'll do text, we'll get the text and then we'll split it at the new line. Note I'm not doing that replacing the carriage return with the with a null character because it is not required. Windows host doesn't care if you have a carriage return character or not, and it doesn't make very much of a difference while displaying R. That earlier was just to clean it up, okay? And we'll um, text dash what is the dot txt files. Okay, remember timer with extra waiting. I'm going to open it up and show you exactly what it does. Only this one. Okay, so the second thing takes uh, function to call, post function, stop, post function, and all that. And then we have an initialize to initialize. And here this constructs everything normally, and then just tells us how to do. And this just initializes second thing can take. Uh, we can call this as well, like so. Our in start, we'll just start the enumerator, timer return itself. Over here, it gets interesting. So, what we have is stop the first set to pause, but not stop, so long as you have not stopped. We will continue on with the timer delta time. Okay, timer value minus equals time dot delta time. And yield return will wait for how much time this get tells us to function to call each thing. It calls us to wait for 3 seconds, we'll wait for 3 seconds. Okay, that's fine. It returns three. We'll wait for three seconds. Over here, we need to check if it has stopped. If it has stopped in the in the process, it might have changed the position. For now, it has been doing absolutely nothing. But it has been. But it has already stopped. If it is stopped, then we'll break it. Okay. Break means it will return from the function. It will escape from the function. It's your classical old return, but you can't use your old return here because it's an I enumerator. Then we'll call the post function, the function you have to call after it, post means after. The current timer value to the second between take, meaning we'll keep repeating on and on and on, waiting for each, uh, for how much time that guy gives. Okay? So over here, we'll turn on the text mesh enable and then we will initialize this. Roam time and show text and wait. And over here, this is the post function, we'll set active, we'll turn on the movement disabler. Meaning now the movement is on and we have the text mesh dot enable meaning now we'll turn on the text mesh. Okay, we'll turn off the text mesh. Here we do the exact opposite. Now we turn on the text mesh and we turn off the movement disable, meaning now it has been disabled the movement. String full flash text dot get random element. We have the full string we'll get a random element from it. First we got the substring from 0 to 1 and then we convert it to uppercase. Then rest, we get all the rest of the function, and then remove the very first one. Okay? Here we get the first one, here we remove the first one. And we'll text one, first letter, and the rest of the string. Okay? So this appears as a big font. Okay? Like that. Okay. And then we have returned a flash text display type, so that we'll wait for that message. On disable, we'll turn off the text mesh. We'll turn on. And then, if, so long as the timer is not done, we we'll turn the cell stop to true. And on enabled, we so long as it is not null, one moment. A 
so long as it is not null if it is not null then we will set it to false we will turn off we will start we will make it possible to start meaning it is now startable then we can start it ok ok so over here we stop it and over here we start it ok otherwise the rest is very easy ok and then over here enable disable behavior very similar ok one moment over here we have an add object for just like that you can use that string type the type you can't use direct object because that's already a keyword so we have to use add object ok string type type and o behavior for other behavior and then we will be using this property so we already know how this works if behavior is not equal to null, then give behavior. Otherwise, give this other thing where we'll assign O behavior to object and component. We'll get type as behavior. We'll convert. We'll get the component on it with the name of type and we'll cast it as a behavior. Okay. Happy? Then if it is and on disable, we'll turn it off and on enable, we'll also turn it on. Okay. So we don't want to turn off this whole, we don't want to turn off the whole of the yeah, camera, we just want to turn off the whole camera, okay? That's all. Okay? Good. Now check separate all children. Yeah, I ran the instant earlier, but here we go. So here we have check separate, public void check separate. Um, there should also be an I shift, but no, 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 sorry. Oh, there may cause conflict. So we'll get go through all the transform the child and we'll get the child at i and then we'll get the component i ship on it and then we'll first we'll check if it is now and if the child is active then we'll check separate okay okay check separate will just flip the direction of the separation and all that okay so over here i'm over here i'm using the rotate with rotation axis and, and speeds Rotate and transform, but over here, planet system is here. Uh, I'm using an animator here, the default animator that comes in, but an icon planet. I've called it so because it's an icosphere. See, it's an icosphere, well, a cot icosphere, if you will. Okay, and over here, I also, of course, I used before. I've already taken a look at that. But over here, I set it up like so as we have the generic, and here we have a quarter. Okay. Here's your quarter and here's your spaceship. Quarter, spaceship. Okay. And I think that concludes our code explanation of the application space expedition ARVR. Yeah. So, uh, hope you like the explanation, hope you like the application, and uh, thanks for.